Let's talk some hoop a little bit, but also it's more about the way in which the sports in the media is broadcast, right? And it's really interesting because uh, even within Fox, Fox and ESPN, CBS doesn't really do that, but you're, you're actually listening to the only guy who's worked for all three places. Yes. This is Doug Gottlieb can't keep a job at any of the three places, right? Maybe that's, maybe that should be the, the headliner. But the fact is that, um, JJ Reddick is a rising. Can I use the word burgeoning? It's a good word. Burgeoning star at ESPN and ABC. So much so that I believe he's going to be calling the NBA finals with Doris Burke, right? There'll be a three person booth. And um, this week, he reappeared on First Take. And the whole sports world was reacting, or has been reacting, to J.J. saying this about Doc Rivers yesterday. I've seen the trend for years. What's the trend? The trend is always making excuses. Get Doc, we get it. Taking over a team in the middle of the season is hard. It's hard. We get it. Just like getting traded in the middle season is hard for a player. We get it. Mm-hmm. But it's always an excuse. It's always throwing your team under the bus. They lose to Memphis. Oh, it's his players. Memphis was playing G League guys and two-way guys. And then you look at his quotes over the weekend. Now he wants to take credit for the James Harden trade to the Clippers working out. He wants credit for that. There's just no <laughs> – there's never accountability with that guy. Well, there's never finish. accountability. Right. So so it's – it's and, and, of course, this has – this resonates more – because J.J. played for Doc. Right? J.J. played for Doc. He has the unique ability to actually, and, and we rarely get this in sports. We rarely get the, uh, unless you're the scorned former player or the scorned coach, and even then it feels fairly transparent. Right? It's like, take RG3 for example. Like RG3 trying to rewrite history and trying to pretend like he was the good dude when it's pretty obvious he's the scorned guy from his time with Washington. And he wants to create a completely different image of what went down. And and that, honestly, to most of us in the business, especially the former players or coaches, like we see through stuff. I take special pride okay, in... Anything I've said and done, especially in the world of basketball, which is my area of of expertise, you would never know what I actually think about the human being. You just wouldn't. Because I try and separate what I think about a person and what I think about their performance, player, or coach. It's a really hard exercise to do, but I, I challenge myself to do it. Whether I had a good interaction or bad interaction, that's not my job right now. My job right now is to tell you what I think about this team, this player, this particular moment. But to have J.J. Redick say, no accountability, same thing every year. It's like, damn, I guess J.J.'s experience playing for Doc was not all peaches and cream. As luck would have it, Doc, who used to work for Disney, ESPN, ABC, and J.J., who actually should be thanking Doc because J.J. Redick was never going to call the NBA Finals until Doc Rivers went back to the NBA. Like, it just wouldn't have happened. I'd like to think it would because J.J. has so many of the markings. I mean, he's a dookie. If you're a dookie, don't you have to be calling a big game? But he has so many of the markings of somebody who's he's very educated on the game. He has a good way of delivering and explaining uh, and trying not to lecture you. Right, he teaches without lecturing. He's got a little bit of swag to him. He's got some recency to him. He's not talking about a game that was played 15 years ago. Like, it, it all works. But he wasn't gonna get, he wasn't gonna get that gig unless Doc bailed for the NBA. So I don't know. Part of you goes like, man, shouldn't he be thanking Doc? Doc's son, Austin Rivers, who of course played some for his son and played some for his dad and the Clippers. Also worked for ESPN ABC. Just happened to be on TV yesterday, and this is what he had to say. It's just a strange coming from JJ. And I have some love for JJ. You're my dookie. You know that. You're my bro. I love you. <laughs> um, it's just your best years were with the Clippers. I don't think he saved your career, but I don't think 
it, I mean, I, this just seems a little bit weird. But in terms of accountability, like, what, what are we doing here? Your best years in the NBA were when you played for him in the Clippers. Let's not forget that. I don't know if there's, like, frustration there or there's tension there between you. I know a lot of times we had to sit you towards the end of the game due to defensive reasons, but you had your best years as a starter there, especially our whole system was drafted around you because you're a shooter. You're not a guy who could put the ball on the floor. You were a strictly shoot guy. You're not like Clay Thompson or Steph who could put the ball on the floor. You were a guy who could catch and shoot, and you did it at a high level. Hell of a career, by the way. Big fan. But your best years were under him. It's just very ironic and kind of weird that you have this energy towards him. The, the energy towards him is weird. I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you. Okay, I'm not going to lie to you. Um, I'm going to call BS on one thing. They did not build the system around J.J. Redick. There was a guy named Chris Paul and a guy named Blake Griffin, and it was Lob City, and then they had DeAndre Jordan. Like Again, it was a, I, it was a very well-constructed team that, for a myriad of reasons, never accomplished essentially anything of historic substance. I would point out, that while it won't go down as a championship team, not even close, and forever it's going to be Clipper curse. The re- the actual reality is that team did something which was previously impossible. It made Clippers pe- it made people in LA Clipper fans. Okay? It made people in LA Clipper fans. There was there's n- anyone who says they're a lifelong Clipper fan, including Billy Crystal is a liar. Billy Crystal grew up in New York. He wasn't a lifelong, like his life started his first 20 years. I'm sure he wasn't a Clipper fan. He moves to Los Angeles. He becomes, he was that guy who was the first in the market Clipper fan. But there's lots of interesting parts here. Right? Lots of interesting parts here. Like Dukies aren't supposed to go at other Dukies. Teammates aren't supposed to go at their teammates. Former players, you don't go at your coach. And oh yeah, by the way, they both worked at ESPN. Like, whoa, isn't that hands off? Now he left, and that's what happens when you leave. Anytime you leave a place, you'll have people that talk ish on you. That's I learned that from a former agent of mine, was a great friend. And he was like, Hey, listen, everybody hates everybody. Just remember, everybody hates everybody. Like, really? Yep. But he's my nope. Everybody hates everybody. Unless they can make money with you or from you, and then they're your friend. Until they can't, and then everybody hates everybody. Okay. Um, I want to connect yesterday and today. Doug Gottlieb in for Colin. This is the herd. So yesterday, JJ has this energy towards Doc. Then today, he gets in a debate with Stephen A. Smith, and this is where we kind of get to what I think JJ is actually guilty of yesterday. And I don't know if I want to say it's the real problem with the media as much as it's the real problem with sports in general. Since when is it players' jobs to educate people on basketball? When did that become a thing? When did that become a thing? Isn't that our job? Isn't that our job? I'll answer. I'll I do answer that as my I'm, job. I'm, I'm, That's I'm, my job I'm, to educate I'm, people I'm on letting, basketball. I'm letting you speak and no, then I, I'm, I'll I'm, answer. I'm, I, I'm, it's our job, Stephen A., to educate mm-hmm. people on basketball. It's okay. our job. And here's the reality. This is the okay. ecosystem we live in. I can do a okay. video on my podcast. I can do a video on my podcast where I break down the last nine games the Pelicans have used Zion Williamson as the primary ball handler and what type of actions that has led to. I looked it up this morning. 54,000 views on YouTube. But I want to call out a coach yesterday Oh, that gets tens of millions of engagements. That's the ecosystem we live in. So do fans actually want to be educated or not? Mm -hmm. Do they? It's a great question. And the answer is yes and no. I view, and I think we could all, if we cut away our ego, uh, I think we would all agree that hot take the, the hot take movement in sports, much like the debate uh, movement in, uh, in news television, okay? all that is, is like junk food. And just like junk food or the American diet, we as Americans are hooked on it. We know it's bad for us. We know it's divisive. Okay, we know we're going to wake up the next day and be like, oh, God, why did I? I love Popeye's. I love it, but God bless. 
there's no amount of gym work that's going to uh, that's going to overtake the fact uh, that your caloric intake is through the roof as well as all the sodium, all the chole- the cholesterol, the bad cholesterol, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Hot takes are junk food. Right? And educated film watching breakdowns, man. That is a healthy healthy amount of veggies. That's a salad. That's keto. Right? That's inter- even intermittent fasting is I, I'm sure it works for people, but the whole idea that you can intermittent fast and eat what I eat whatever you want. Like, no, you can't eat whatever you want. You can't go like, well, I'm not gonna eat for 15 hours of the day, 18 hours a day, then I'm gonna pound some Milky Ways and I'll be good. Like, nah, it doesn't work that way. I'm and the truth is that your diet should be like your sports intake. Everything in moderation. Like, look, I know lots of people who've run into this where they just love sports, love talking about the 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 granular X and O, uh, what a coach did, a move, an adjustment. Hell, uh, we were supposed to have Rosillo on today. Rosillo is a perfect example of that, right? Didn't grow up as like a hardcore hooper. Loves it. That dude watches tons of game and tape and has educated himself to the point that he knows what he's looking at. But then you get to the JJ's dilemma is like, look, just because I know what I'm looking at and know what my opinion is, one, it doesn't have the credibility of having played, coached, or worked in the NBA. And two, do people actually want that? Like what, what, what JJ's saying is right. Like, dude, I do a breakdown. Nobody cares. It actually explains. And then I, I say, you know, Doc Rivers, there's no, no, never any accountability. And that spikes through the roof. Now, the magic to it is having a take and supporting it with video. Is teaching and educating and then promoting and using that to be your take. Let me tell you why Zion Williamson can be a superstar in the NBA. Look at how they're using him. This changes everything. Or having Zion Williamson and have all that stuff and then show the fact that he doesn't really dunk on people anymore because he's been so heavy. It's I talk to NBA people like, they're, it's sad. He doesn't have any explosiveness anymore. Instead of saying, Zion Williamson's a bum! He's fat! He's worried about social media, right? Instead, just like support it with actual evidence. And now all of a sudden, it's like throwing in a salad when you got... Something bad for you, which I think is why they put the asparagus. It's always good to have asparagus when you go to a steak place. You guys ever do that? Like you eat a steak, but then you make sure you have an asparagus. You're like, no, no, no I had the asparagus. That cleans out all this, the bad steak stuff. So I, I look at this thing and I think that JJ is, he's been dropped into this world, which looks like something that he's starting to figure out, oh my gosh, I had no idea. And it's really, really hard to come off of fast food because it's full of sugar and salt and things that we become addicted to. Just like the hot takes or just like, uh, look, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you honest to God. So I worked at ESPN and I, I want to make sure that this is a clear statement. I've worked at ESPN, at CBS and at Fox and people ask, what's the best? Whoever, whoever the check, like they're all different. They're, it's, they're honestly, they're all cool. They all have a flaw or something I could pick apart. My time there was awesome. But the fight that a lot of us always had is like, do we always have to do a Duke topic? Do we always have to do a Kansas topic? Do we always have to do those? Even in sports radio. Do I have to talk about LeBron all the time? Right. Thank God Tom Brady retired because between Tom Brady and LeBron, like that was the rundown to so many shows, especially ones on TV. And to people outside of the industry, like, why do you always talk about LeBron? Why do you always talk about Tom Brady? The answer is in JJ's answer, which is people care. And our job is to talk about what more people care about. But who's going to be brave enough to collectively wean America off of fast food. That's really what it comes down to. I mean, I'll actually commend the FS1 guys because though they still, the topics are still, you know, kind of the same. The tone is, I I believe, has changed on 
FS1 network wise. It's much more discussion and actual substantive sort of debate. And it's thoughtful as opposed to first take is still yelling and screaming, which look, dude, there's a place in sports and sports arguments for yelling and screaming. I know I have tons of friends and one of them I was driving home yesterday and we not yelling and screaming, but we got into a a debate over something I talked about yesterday. But it's like one of those things. We know it's bad for us. We know it creates these unrealistic expectations, these awful uh, labels Okay, people say things out of anger or attempt to be funny and they're just, I mean, just kind of cruel towards some athletes or some coaches. And the worst part is completely uneducated. But you love it. You love it. It's our diet. And weaning off it also means weaning off of viewers. You know? I mean, look, is there a world there where you can, I mean, part of the reason he only got 54,000 views on a breakdown was because it's the Pelicans and because it's not, but part of it is it didn't have the machine of ESPN behind it and it didn't become viral. Something goes viral, no matter how small it is, it blows up. So the reality is, had he done the same breakdown of say LeBron James not moving on defense, you know, and he picks apart like, well, here's the real reason that the Lakers aren't any good. And he starts breaking about, And then he, he he puts it with a take hot or lukewarm, if you want, on first take. And then ESPN blowtorches it out. Well, then it would probably there is again, that's the everything in moderation. And honestly, isn't JJ guilty of the same thing by yelling out that. It's never about accountability, and he didn't provide substance. He didn't provide a story. He didn't provide a background. All we think is, well, J.J. played for him. He must never be accountable. That's it, chapter and verse. But then he's asking, isn't it our job, right, to educate sports fans? It is. Okay, J.J., here's the challenge. Explain to me how when you played for Doc Rivers— he lacked accountability and how that affected your team's performance. Do that. That's doing your job. But it's really hard because you're trying to wean people off of the fast food. You're trying to wean people off of the sugar that is hot takes. 